Welcome to this video from Learn Electrics. We have often been asked about competent person schemes for electricians and how to become a registered domestic electrical installer, sometimes called Part P. So we hope that in this video we can answer many of those questions. The two main questions are how do I join a CPS or competent person scheme and what happens when I am being assessed for membership? Well, I was an assessor for one of the big scheme providers for several years and I hope to put your mind at rest by passing on the sort of things that I was looking for during an assessment as an assessor and the things that you can do to make the assessment run smoothly. We can start by looking at the scheme providers. The major players are listed at the bottom of this slide. NIC, EIC, NAPIT and ELEXA. All CPS schemes are government regulated and all schemes will follow very similar guidance. All members of a CPS scheme must follow the same standards as required by UCAS and CERTSURE. This means that there is actually little difference in membership requirements and it is not my place to recommend one scheme over another. So we can start with the question why should I join a competent person scheme? Well certain types of electrical work are notifiable to the local authority and if you carry out these types of work you are required by law to notify them. Becoming a member is the easiest way to comply with these legal requirements to notify the work. As a CPS member, you can self-certify your own work. This saves you a lot of time and it has significant cost savings over not being a member. This is because if you are not a member, the law requires that you notify the local authority before you start work and to pay a large fee to them for every notifiable job. Currently, the cost of notifying a job by this method is around £300 every time. That could be all the profit out of every job. The cost of notifying as a scheme member is just two or three pounds a time. And finally, membership allows you to display the scheme's logos on your van, on your paperwork, on your business cards, etc. This not only impresses the customer, but also gives the customer the confidence that you are a competent person and that you are working to the required standards. More confidence in you means more referrals and that means more work for you. What work is notifiable then? Any work in a dwelling, a domestic property, that involves changing a consumer unit. Any work where you install a new circuit, where you provide a new circuit breaker, some new cables and new accessories. For example, installing a new electric cooker circuit where one did not exist before. And any work that is in a special location. And these are areas of increased risk of electric shock. In a domestic property, this will include bathrooms, rooms with showers, swimming pools and outdoor work. For instance, installing a new circuit for the electric gates. Let's move on to how you join a scheme. The first thing to do is to contact a scheme provider. You may have a preferred organisation. You may have friends in the trade who recommend their scheme provider. Whatever your choice, a quick search on Google will reveal their most up-to-date contact number. An online application is quick and easy and gets the ball rolling straight away. A few days later, you will be contacted by the office to discuss your application. You will need to provide them with certain information. Make sure you have it to hand. As well as the usual contact details, they must have your national insurance number. 
Without it, the application process is likely to grind to a halt. Evidence of your electrical training is required. Apprenticeship certificates, trade exam certificates such as 18th edition, Part P, inspection and test exams, NVQs and so on. You will also need to provide evidence of relevant insurances and of course they will ask politely for your joining fees, currently hovering around £400 per year. Most providers will allow staged payments. After processing by the office, your details will be passed to your local field officer who will contact you for a friendly chat. They will discuss your application and arrange a visit for your initial assessment. During this call, the assessor will want to discuss the job that you are going to show him as evidence of your competence. What happens when the assessor visits? Remember, the assessor is on your side. He wants you to pass the assessment. The best way I can describe this is that the assessment is split into two halves, what I call the office side and the job side. Allow about two hours for each half. So, dealing with the office side first, you need to demonstrate that you are a professional business. You may be a one-man outfit, but be organised. Have the relevant paperwork properly filed and to hand. Give the assessor the confidence that you are in control of your paperwork. There was nothing more frustrating to me as an assessor than to have a new member go looking upstairs for insurance certificates, into the kitchen for his calibration certificate and the long search in the van for the installation certificates. Get everything together. It will impress the assessor. You will need to show evidence of two years plus experience in the electrical trade. This can be from work on your own or work you've done for another business. Whatever the skill level you were at, record the information for him and make every effort to list sufficient work for him. It may be that you were employed in a trade where electrical work was only part of your job description. You will still record this as much as you can. The assessor will need to actually see a copy of the current BS7671 wiring regulations. Most people will have a physical copy, a paper book, but the online version is acceptable but more expensive. Know how to use the book. You are going to be asked questions on the wiring regulations. No book and you will not pass your assessment today. The same applies to the on-site guide. You will need a copy and you will be questioned on it. Physical copies or online versions of approved document P and the memorandum of guidance on the electricity work regulations must be in your possession and must be seen. If it is the online version, I will ask you to open the file and tell me what regulation is on page 8 and page 13 for instance. If you haven't actually got the online version, you can't show me. Don't try and fob your assessor off with a photograph of the front cover. People have tried, I always find out. The assessor will also need to see your public liability and professional indemnity insurance certificates. And you must have a working test meter with a current calibration certificate for it. You will need a health and safety policy in place and a complaints procedure in place. Something very simple will suffice and samples of these documents can be found with a quick Google image search. Nothing complicated. Find one that suits your business and copy it. Insert your name where needed. These are just simple statements of your positive attitude and commitment towards health and safety and customer complaints. Again, are you a professional outfit? Most importantly, the assessor will want to see recent electrical certificates and especially the certificates for the job that you're going to take him to in an hour or two. The certificates must be fully completed before your assessor arrives. You will not have the opportunity 
to complete the certificates during the assessment. Fall down at this stage and you may not even get as far as a site visit. Plus any other items that the assessor might request, which will include a few questions on the wiring regulations and Part P. Your answers are recorded and there is a pass or fail element to this. It is open book. It is to test your ability to use the books. Understanding the books really matters. What about the site visit then? It is your responsibility to arrange full access to the work being assessed at the time agreed with your assessor. You must have permission to turn the power off agreed with your customer in advance. You must have a working test meter and you must know how to use it. Make sure that you have the correct tools to hand and the appropriate health and safety in place. Fully completed certificates for the job being assessed must be provided and the job should not involve excessive travel from your office location. Five or ten miles should be considered a maximum. Some assessors will allow the assessed work to be in your own house. The assessor will need to see you test two circuits and he will compare your results to the electrical certificates that you have completed. Make sure that you know how to test those agreed circuits completely before your assessment day. Some assessors may allow both circuits to be in the same property. Some will want to see one circuit in each of two separate properties and expect to be asked questions about the job. The assessor is looking for evidence that you are competent. The assessor wants you to pass the assessment, give him or her the evidence and show him the competence that you have. What should your complaints procedure look like? It doesn't need to be long or complicated. There are lots of examples on Google that can be copied and your details entered. Make it suit your business. Basically, all you need to say is that you appreciate customer feedback that you look on complaints as a positive opportunity to improve and state a time frame in which you intend to deal with complaints. You will be expected to have a complaints log, which hopefully will be blank all the time. This shows your positive actions if you do have a complaint. This is what mine looked like, simply done on the computer. Your health and safety policy does not need to be pages and pages long. If you are a small outfit, then a one or two page policy will suffice. Again, look on Google for examples. It just needs to be a statement that you take health and safety seriously, that you will work safely with due regard for yourself and others. A statement about personal protective equipment is encouraged and perhaps a mention about face masks with the current coronavirus problems. Don't forget to sign and date the policy. It is considered to be not in force until it is signed and dated. We mentioned books earlier. You must have a copy of the Memorandum of Guidance on the Electricity at Work Regulations and a copy of approved document P. These are available free of charge online a simple Google search will reveal dozens of sites where you can download the latest version in PDF format. Two other books that you must have. These are BS7671 Wiring Regulations and currently we're working to 18th edition and a copy of the on-site guide. Useful to have is the Electrician's Guide to the Building Regulations. Personally, I find this the best of the books, full of pictures and tables. It is extremely useful, but it's your choice whether you actually purchase this book. Notice on this slide that all three books are either blue or have a blue stripe on them. This indicates that they are to the current version of 18th edition. Any other colour and the books are of no use to you and will not be accepted by the assessor. 
you must have a working test meter it must be calibrated and you must have the calibration certificate and most importantly you must know how to use it make sure the correct insurances are in place and that you have the certificates to show the assessor your electrical certificates must be fully completed especially for the job that you're taking the assessor to you will not get far on your assessment with half completed paperwork well that's it for another video whichever scheme you decide to join i wish you luck hard work and dedication will give you a good living in the electrical trade we hope you enjoyed this video from learn electrics and that you have added more knowledge to your mental toolbox it might be a good idea to click and save this video so that you can review in the future please click the subscribe button below it will mean that you do not miss our next weekly video and it also helps us too thanks for watching and we hope to see you again very soon